Ever wondered just how deadly a minigun can be? Join us as we put this powerful weapon to the test at the gun range to see just how lethal it truly is. From its rapid fire rate to its immense firepower, we'll break down the impact and destruction a minigun can cause. Watch as we explore the sheer force and devastation of this iconic weapon in action. Don't miss out on this intense gun range test to uncover the true power of a minigun. Collision Gun Well, the mini with a true masterpiece of military engineering that, when combined with electricity, produces the characteristic sound that makes some tremble and boosts the morale of others. But do you really know how lethal and powerful this weapon is, the effect it produces on a human, a vehicle, or even a modern tank or airplane? Well, this weapon, although it seems brought from the future of a strange planet, really descends from the simplest concepts of mechanics. In 1860, the inventor Richard Gadling produced a machine that could help sow rice and wheat. However, with the advent of the American Civil War in 1861, Richard Gadling modified his agricultural machine to spit out bullets instead of seeds. Initially, the weapon, which he himself named the Gadling gun, used a crank that allowed it to fire about 200 bullets per minute. That gave a soldier the firepower of about 100 soldiers of the time. However, years later, when someone had the brilliant idea to replace the crank firing system with an electric motor firing system, the weapon was firing in bullets per minute. Incredibly, although the invention was something impressive, the engineers of the time did not know how to feed the weapon. Possibly, the technology was very advanced for its time, so the project was shelved and forgotten for many decades. It was not until the mid-1950s when the General Electric Company began to manufacture the M134 minigun and the M61 Vulcan, and the rest is history. The minigun would have its first use in the Vietnam War. The minigun has so much concentrated firepower that a bulletproof vest could not withstand it. An unarmored vehicle would simply end up like Swiss cheese, and in calibers of 20 or 30 millimeters, this weapon could tear apart a tank or a helicopter. That powerful it is, but the topic is much more complex than that, and this video will delve into its lethality in detail. And so it will be. The M134 minigun is a multi-barrel machine gun of 7.62 by 51 mm caliber. It uses a Gatling-type firing system powered by an electric motor. You might wonder why it is called a minigun. This weapon is not mini at all. Well, you must know that the M134 is only the younger sister. There are bigger ones, which we will talk about later. The M134 particularly has a rate of fire of 2,000 to 6,000 bullets per minute, depending on the variant we refer to. If we take the maximum number of shots per minute, we are talking about the M134 firing about 100 bullets per second or, in more conservative terms, about 50 bullets per second. Anyway, that's impressive. The bullet used by the M134 is a 7.62 by 51 mm NATO round, and it exits at a speed of 850 meters per second, a speed similar to that of a modern automatic machine gun. To give you an idea, it's the same type of ammunition used by an M14 rifle, an M60 machine gun, a G3 battle rifle, or an FN FAL combat rifle. The 7.62x51 mm cartridge is still used today thanks to its stopping power and effective range. When a bullet impacts at high speed and penetrates the tissue, fragmentation creates a rapid energy transfer that can produce lethal wound effects in a human. And here we are only talking about a single bullet, which is enough to cause significant damage to a person. Now imagine hundreds of splinters impacting a single person. The distance from which it is fired is quite important to visualize the damage it would do to a human. Viewing it from a conservative perspective where a person receives from 33 to 50 bullets per second of 7.62 by 51 millimeters at about 10 meters, the individual would be completely vaporized. At this distance, it would be sufficient to basically disintegrate most of their body before they realized they had received all the power of an M134. When at a distance of 50 meters, it wouldn't be so much vaporizing them, but it would be more like tearing them apart. Sorry for that graphic description, but it's the reality. At 75 meters distance, it would be exactly the same, they would be torn apart, but the pieces would be slightly larger. At 100 meters, where we are talking about a relatively long distance, many projectiles would surely miss the target, but due to the high rate of fire, it wouldn't matter because many of the projectiles would still hit it, and the target would be riddled. 
it is practically impossible to escape that firepower when considering the scenario without cover. Even with cement, brick, or other types of materials as cover, sustained fire from the M134 would destroy the cover and end dramatically with the person behind it. In the case of an unarmored vehicle, the power of this weapon is also sufficient to leave it full of holes as if there was no tomorrow. In fact, this weapon is regularly used by military forces against enemy vehicles due to its extreme efficiency in eliminating all occupants. And if the weapon comes from a helicopter and is firing from above, it's much worse. Now, let's move on to the next little sister of the M134, the M61 Vulcan. This is a rotary cannon of the Gatling type with a 20mm caliber. The 20mm far surpasses the power of a 7.62x 51mm NATO bullet. The M61 Vulcan is pneumatically or hydraulically operated, electrically fired, and air-cooled. The M61A1 version has a rate of fire of 6,000 rounds per minute, which equals a precise 100 rounds per second. The multiple barrels provide a very high rate of fire and contribute to a long weapon life by minimizing friction and heat from a single barrel. But remember, we are talking about a damn 20mm caliber. 20mm caliber weapons are not usually used to attack individual soldiers but against targets like vehicles, buildings, or airplanes. For this reason, if we assumed a case where a Vulcan attacked an individual soldier, it would produce the same results as an M134 minigun but multiplied by 3. Let your imagination run wild, and you'll see the damage I'm referring to because honestly, describing it is very difficult. As for an unarmored vehicle, the M61 Vulcan would tear it to pieces if they kept sustained fire on it for several seconds. On the 20mm side, it's a caliber that most armored vehicles cannot withstand. If we talk about a vehicle with level 5 NIJ armor, something truly resistant, it would also be penetrated by the raid and power of this weapon, which is used in fighter jets like the F-15 Eagle, the F-14 Tomcat, the F-16 Fighting Falcon, and the F-18 Hornet. Additionally, it is also used in the famous close-in weapon systems, CIWS, which many modern warships carry and use to shoot down enemy aircraft and missiles. If we consider a context where an M61 Vulcan attacks a tank, the result would directly depend on the tank's armor. Usually, the most modern and heavy tanks could possibly withstand it, but the older or lighter armored tanks could not withstand sustained and constant fire from this weapon. They would be completely riddled. A lighter version of the Vulcan was developed for the F-22 Raptor, the M61A2. It is mechanically the same as the M61A1 but with thinner barrels to reduce the weapon's weight. Additionally, the modifications gave it a higher rate of fire, as if it wasn't enough, allowing it to fire about 6,600 rounds per minute, which would be equivalent to 110 bullets per second. If we consider that each bullet has a muzzle energy of almost 52 times the energy of a 9mm bullet, or triple the energy of a 7.62x 51mm NATO, it can be said that a relatively light armor could be devastated in seconds or even less. The M61A2 Vulcan and its associated weapon systems will likely remain in service for several more decades, and despite the criticism it receives for its ammunition consumption, it is one of the most lethal weapons in existence in the current world. The following weapons are the GSH-23, GSH-30, and GSH-623. The GSH-23 uses a 23mm caliber, the GSH-30 uses a 30mm caliber, and the GSH-623 uses a 23mm caliber. All these weapons are aircraft rotary cannons from the Soviet era and are the American weapons counterparts we have already mentioned. The USSR also developed the GSH-630, which uses a 30mm caliber with six barrels and could reach 6,000 rounds per minute. It is one of the most dangerous Soviet weapons, with a power almost unimaginable. With the same lethality as the American weapons, these weapons could destroy most enemy armored vehicles, including tanks, if the fire was sustained. The damage they could cause to a human body is indescribable, and as such, I will not delve into details to avoid unnecessary graphic content. Finally, the Gryazev Shipanov GSH-623M is an autocannon that uses 23mm caliber, has 6 barrels, and is one of the fastest weapons with a rate of fire of up to 10,000 rounds per minute. This figure may seem exaggerated, but it's not. This weapon, in terms of effectiveness, can render anyone who stands in front of it to shreds. 
Just imagine its firepower. 166 per second. One second of sustained fire would turn a tank into a heap of scrap metal and a group of soldiers into a cloud of red mist. Despite its age, these Russian weapons are still in use today and will probably continue to be for many more years. Although these aircraft rotary cannons are impressive, the American Gao-8 Avenger is even more terrifying. The Gao-8 Avenger is a rotary cannon with 7 barrels, 30mm caliber, and a fire rate of up to 4,200 rounds per minute. It was designed to be mounted on the A-10 Thunderbolt II aircraft, also known as the Warthog. The A-10 Thunderbolt is a ground-attack aircraft designed to provide close air support to ground troops, and its Gao-8 Avenger cannon is the main weapon used to destroy enemy armored vehicles. The 30mm rounds fired by the Gao-8 have a high explosive power, armor-piercing capability, and are very effective against tanks and other heavily armored vehicles. The Gao-8 is so powerful that the recoil force is sufficient to slow down the A-10 Thunderbolt in flight. This weapon uses a unique firing system that allows its barrels to rotate independently, increasing the rate of fire and reducing heat buildup. This means it can maintain high firepower for longer periods without overheating. The Gao-8 Avenger has proven to be one of the most effective weapons for close air support and anti-armor missions. Its ability to neutralize enemy tanks and vehicles quickly and effectively has made it a valuable asset for the U.S. Air Force. The Gao-8 has a total weight of around 1,200 kilograms, including the ammunition, and the recoil force generated by this weapon is so strong that the A-10 Thunderbolt's design includes two hydraulic systems to counteract the recoil and keep the aircraft stable during firing. The A-10 Thunderbolt's success and the effectiveness of the Gao-8 Avenger have earned this weapon system a legendary status among military forces. This concludes our analysis of the lethality of these incredible weapons. We invite you to share your opinion on how this hypothetical event could have affected the outcome of the war. Leave us your comments and subscribe for more historical analyses. Thank you for following us to the end. If you are new to our channel, subscribe and follow our social networks in the description.